Introducing Bluehost Cloud, ultra-fast WordPress hosting with 100% uptime. Want a website with unmatched power, speed, and control? Of course you do. And now you can have all three with Bluehost Cloud, the new web hosting plan from Bluehost. With 100% uptime and incredibly speedy load times, your WordPress websites will be dependable and lightning fast on a global scale. Plus, your sites can handle even the biggest traffic spikes without going down or lagging. And with Bluehost Cloud, you get 24-7 WordPress priority support, meaning you're connected to WordPress experts anytime you need them. Not to mention, you automatically get daily backups and world-class security. So, what are you waiting for? Get Bluehost Cloud today by visiting bluehost.com. That's bluehost.com. It's that time of the year. Your vacation is coming up. You can already hear the beach waves, feel the warm breeze, relax, and think about work. You really, really want it all to work out while you're away. Monday.com gives you and the team that peace of mind. When all work is on one platform and everyone's in sync, things just flow. Wherever you are, tap the banner to go to monday.com. Beware the Redwood Bureau, a secret organization which captures and researches creatures and objects that defy explanation. Their reckless procedures have led to countless innocent lives lost. I am Agent Conroy. I worked for the Redwood Bureau, but I have escaped them to leak their reports to the unsuspecting public. You have the right to know. In the vast annals of the Redwood Bureau, there exist cases that defy the norms of our perceived reality blurring the lines between the conceivable and the inconceivable. Among these, Phenomenon 0188 stands as a testament to the uncharted territories of the human mind. Dubbed by some within the Bureau as the Dreamwalker case, this file delves into the intricate tapestry of our subconscious, where dreams and reality intertwine in a dance as old as time itself. Dreams, those nightly escapades of the psyche, have long been subjects of fascination and fear, a window into the depths of our inner selves. Yet Phenomenon 0188 takes this fascination to an unprecedented level. In my time as an agent, I've scoured through countless records, each more bewildering than the last, of shared dreamscapes and psychic echoes. There was the incident in a small town in Virginia, where an entire community reported a sequence of collective dreams leading to a series of unexplained events that left the town in disarray. Another case of an online community spanning continents brought together by their shared nocturnal visions. Their experiences, documented meticulously, painted a picture of a surreal world that existed parallel to our own, where the boundaries of individual consciousness seemed to dissolve. These narratives are scattered across the globe, crossing cultural and geographical divides, suggesting a phenomenon far beyond the scope of mere coincidence or scientific explanation. Theories range from the psychological, collective archetypes embedded in the human psyche, to the more esoteric, hinting at a shared consciousness or even other dimensional influences. As we navigate the murky waters of Phenomenon 0188, it's crucial to remember the Redwood Bureau's role in this. The Bureau, known for its clandestine operations and manipulation of the unknown, has always had a vested interest in the realms of the mind. Their experiments, often crossing the line of ethical boundaries, have ventured into territories that most would consider forbidden. Could Phenomenon 0188 be a byproduct of one of their darker ventures, an unintended consequence of a foray into psychic manipulation? Or is it a natural occurrence, a glimpse into a universal truth that binds us all in the shared landscape of our dreams. As we explore the depths of this case, keep in mind the fragility of our own understanding of consciousness. In the realm of Phenomenon 0188, the only certainty is the uncertainty of our own perceptions. perceptions. It's like 
I'm floating, drifting in a world that's both a dream and a nightmare. The lines are blurred, reality and fantasy melded into one. His voice is my anchor, a constant hum in the back of my mind, guiding me, controlling me. I walk the streets, but I'm not the same. They're not the same. The buildings twist and turn in impossible ways. The people, their shadows, flickering out of existence. Meaningless pawns on a grand stage. I spread his image, infecting minds, planting seeds of chaos and destruction. Groups gather, brought together by him. They are like sleepwalkers, their eyes glazed, speaking of dreams and visions. I'm there, in the crowd, but not part of it. I'm the puppeteer, they are my puppets, and I his. Night after night, I follow his orders. Under the bridge, there's a gathering, a ritual of sorts. They're waiting for me, guided by the man in their dreams. I speak, but the words aren't mine. They are his, a sermon of madness and chaos. The crowd listens, entranced. They believe I'm a prophet, a harbinger of a new age. But I'm just a husk, a shell inhabited by his will. I watch myself from afar, a spectator in my own body, as I lead these lost souls down a path of destruction. He tells me of other places, other cities where his seeds have taken root. I travel, a nomad in a waking dream, spreading his influence, leaving a trail of chaos in my wake. Each city becomes a chapter in his grand narrative, a story of terror and madness written in the stars. I am no longer Michael. I'm a vessel, a conduit for something ancient and terrifying. His voice is all I know, his desires all I fulfill. The man in my dreams is now the man of my reality. A dark god walking among mortals, shaping the world in his image. In the deepest recesses of my fractured mind, I relish it. I have become an agent of nightmare, a herald of the end. These are not dreams. They are a revelation, a descent into the abyss. And I'm the one leading the way. Welcome, I'm glad you're here. Let's start with something simple to help us get acquainted. Can you tell me a bit about what your typical day looks like? Sure. I guess it's pretty ordinary. I work in IT, so most of my day is spent in front of a computer. After work, I just watch some TV or read before trying to sleep. How have you been feeling about your work and daily routine? Do you find it fulfilling, or is there something missing? It's alright, I suppose. It's not exactly thrilling, but it pays the bills. Sometimes, I just feel like I'm going through the motions, you know? That sense of going through the motions, do you find that's affecting other areas of your life as well? Yeah, I guess. It's like I'm just waiting for something to happen, but I don't know what. My social life isn't much to speak of either. I hang out with a few friends sometimes, but that's about it. It sounds like there's a sense of stagnation, perhaps? Now about your sleep, you mentioned having trouble. Can you elaborate on that? I just find it hard to shut my brain off, you know? 
I lie in bed and my mind races with all these thoughts. And when I do fall asleep, it doesn't feel restful. I have these weird dreams. Dreams can often be a window into our subconscious. Do you remember any of these dreams in particular? There's one that's been reoccurring. It's nothing frightening, just odd. I'm in this endless hallway, and there's this feeling of anticipation, like I'm supposed to meet someone, but I never do. That's interesting. A recurring dream in an endless hallway, it seems like there's a sense of searching or waiting for something. We can explore this more in our next session. For now, let's try some relaxation techniques to help with your sleep. Welcome back. Last time you mentioned a recurring dream about an endless hallway. Have you had that dream again since our last session? Yeah, I did. But this time, it was different. There was someone else in the dream. A man. I don't know who he is, but his face. It's so distinct. Yet, I can't place where I've seen him. Can you describe this man? What about him stood out to you? It's hard to explain. He has a very ordinary face, but there was something compelling about him. He didn't say anything, just stood there, looking at me. I felt like he wanted to tell me something. That's quite intriguing. How did his presence in the dream make you feel? It was unsettling, but not in a threatening way. More like he was part of the dream that I needed to understand. Like he held an answer to a question I hadn't asked yet. Dreams often symbolize our inner thoughts and feelings. This man could represent an aspect of yourself or something in your life you're trying to comprehend. Have you felt this sense of needing answers in your waking life? I guess so. Like I said before, I feel like I'm waiting for something. Maybe this man is a manifestation of that feeling. It's just so weird because I can't shake off the image of his face. It's not uncommon for certain dream images to linger. Let's explore this feeling of anticipation you have. Do you feel it's connected to any specific aspect of your life, or perhaps to your broader existential experience? I'm not sure. It's like this vague sense that something's missing or that I'm not seeing the full picture. Let's focus on these feelings in our next session. In the meantime, I'll recommend a few exercises to help you relax before sleep. It might also be helpful to keep a dream journal to record any more encounters with this man or other notable dreams. Good to see you again. How have you been feeling since our last session? It's been a strange week. The dream, it keeps evolving. The man was there again, and it felt more real than ever. Tell me more about this dream. What happened this time? I was back in the hallway, but it didn't feel endless this time. I was walking towards something or someone. The man was standing at the end, waiting for me. How did you feel as you walked towards him? Anxious but also curious. It's like I knew he was the key to whatever I'm searching for. When I got closer, he finally spoke. What did he say? He just said my name. But it felt like he was saying so much more. His voice was familiar, yet I can't recall ever hearing it before. It's hard to describe. Hearing your name in a dream, especially from a figure that feels significant, can be quite impactful. How did it affect you? I woke up immediately. It was like being snapped back to reality. But the odd thing is, throughout the day, I felt like he was standing behind me, watching me. It seems this dream figure is becoming more integral to your subconscious. Do you feel his presence is comforting or unsettling? A bit of both. I feel like he's trying to communicate something important to me. But there's also this fear of the unknown. 
What does he represent? And why me? Those are valid questions. Sometimes our subconscious creates figures to symbolize our inner conflicts or desires. Let's delve into this in our next session. For now, continue with the relaxation techniques and keep noting any further developments in your dream journal. I'm glad you're here. How have you been feeling since our last meeting? Different. The dreams are not just dreams anymore. They're... directions. Directions? Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? The man in the dream. He's not just a passive figure. He's telling me to do things in my waking life. What sort of things is he telling you to do? Small things at first. Like picking a particular color to wear. Or taking a different route to work. But it's escalating. He's in my head, even when I'm awake. Do you feel compelled to act on these instructions? Yes. It's like I don't have a choice. The other day, he told me to go to this specific coffee shop. When I got there, I... I don't know. It's like I was supposed to meet someone or see something. But nothing happened. It's concerning that these dreams are influencing your behavior to this extent. We need to consider strategies to manage this influence. I tried to resist. But it's like fighting a tide. There's a part of me that's curious about where all this is leading. It feels significant, like there's something bigger. It's not uncommon for our subconscious to create narratives that make us feel part of a larger story, but we need to ensure it's not detrimental to your well-being. Let's work on some cognitive exercises to help you maintain control. I'll try, but it's getting harder to tell where the line is that separates us. It's like more merging. It's good to see you again. How have you been since our last session? Surprisingly good, actually. I've been feeling at peace, in a way. And that's interesting to hear, given the distress you expressed previously. What's changed? I've stopped fighting it, embracing his presence, his guidance. It's liberating. While it's important to find peace, I'm concerned about the source of this sudden change. Can you tell me more about this guidance? It's as if he's showing me a different way to view the world, a new perspective on life. His instructions don't feel like commands anymore, but more like suggestions from a wise friend. A wise friend who exists only in your dreams. You understand why I'm worried, right? I do. But you haven't seen what I've seen. Felt what I've felt. It's hard to explain, but it's as though he's opened my eyes. I'm here to understand and help, but this reliance on a dream figure for guidance could be a sign of disassociating from reality. Perhaps. But what if this reality we cling to is just a small part of something greater? He's shown me glimpses of possibilities beyond anything I could have imagined. It's natural for our minds to explore such concepts, but we need to stay grounded in the reality we live in. Let's talk about maintaining a balance. I appreciate your concern, but I don't feel lost. On the contrary, I've never felt more found. It's like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm very glad you came today. How are you feeling? Not... not good. It's all falling apart. I can't... I can't control it anymore. Slow down. Tell me what's happening. What can't you control? Him. The man in my dreams. He's not guiding me. He's... he's a tormentor. I've done things. Horrible things. Because he made me. 
it's important to remember that dreams cannot force you to act. Your actions are still your own. No. You don't understand. He's inside my head now, all the time. I hear him, even when I'm awake. I can't escape him. We need to consider immediate intervention. This could be a severe disassociative episode. You're not alone in this. Intervention? It's too late for that. It's gone too far. The things I've seen, the things I've done, I can't undo them. Focus on my voice. We can work through this together. You're here, in a safe space. Safe? There's no safety from him. He's everywhere. He made me... God. The blood. The screams. I can't get him out of my head. I'm here to help you, but you need to talk to me. Tell me what happened. I can't say it. Just know, it's all because of him. And soon, you'll see. You'll see him too, in your dreams, just like I did. Let's not jump to conclusions. We need to stay grounded in the here and now. Grounded? There's no ground left for me. I'm lost. Lost in a sea of his madness. And soon, you will be too. This episode is sponsored by June's Journey. Attention all mystery lovers. Dive into the captivating world of June's Journey, the hidden object game that will awaken your inner detective. Join June Parker on her quest to uncover the shocking truth behind her sister's murder in the glamorous 1920s. I'm a couple of chapters in, and I love unlocking new pieces to the mystery after each hidden item search. The beautifully detailed scenes, from New York's finest parlors to the charming sidewalks of Paris, make the experience truly immersive. As you progress, you'll also get to build and customize your very own island estate, complete with stunning gardens and luxurious buildings. Gather compelling evidence, decipher cleverly hidden clues, and unravel the dark secrets of the Parker family. Each twist and turn will keep you on the edge of your seat, eager to crack the case. Cooperate or compete against other players in the detective club, and you'll even get a chance to play in a detective league to test your skills. Are you ready to jump back in time, detectives? Download June's Journey for free today in iOS and Android. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Life before all this was, well, unremarkable. I'm your typical tech guy, headset on, tapping away at a keyboard, surrounded by screens. People often joked I was part of the furniture in the office, reliable, but not exactly exciting. My routine was a well-oiled machine, home, work, a bit of TV, then bed. Except sleep never came easy. I toss and turn, thoughts racing. It's always been like my mind refuses to switch off. I lay there in the dark, staring at the ceiling, 
waiting for the elusive wave of sleep to wash over my weary mind. Living like this takes its toll. My eyes are always heavy, my thoughts foggy. Coffee has become my best friend, but even that has its limits. I joked about it with my colleagues, the typical insomniac's lament, but deep down, it was starting to worry me. Then, the dreams began. Nothing quite so alarming at first, just odd. I'd find myself in different places, a forest, a deserted street, an empty room. These dreams had a clarity to them, a vividness that felt almost real. I'd wake up confused, disoriented, questioning whether I'd actually slept at all. I brushed it off, attributing the dreams to stress, or maybe too much screen time. But as the weeks progressed, so did the dreams. They became more structured, more consistent. I'd be walking through an endless, dimly lit hallway, its walls lined with doors that never opened. It wasn't frightening, not at first, more puzzling than anything. Why a hallway? What did it mean? I'd never been one for dream analysis, but this felt different, significant, somehow. Work became even harder. My concentration was shot. I'd stare blankly at code, lines blurring into meaningless jumble. My boss noticed and pulled me aside one day. He asked me if everything was okay. I put on a brave face, forced a smile, and assured him I was just going through a rough patch with sleep. He suggested taking some time off, but I declined. I didn't want to draw more attention to myself. I don't like standing out. My social life, what little there was of it, dwindled further. Friends stopped calling after a while. They didn't understand, couldn't understand what it was like to be trapped in your own mind night after night. I knew I needed help when I started seeing things during the day. Shadows at the edge of my vision, fleeting glimpses of figures that vanished when I turned my head in their direction. I was on edge, jumpy. I remember one day spilling my coffee all over my desk just because someone tapped me on the shoulder. That's when I decided to see Dr. Simmons. Therapy wasn't really my thing, but what choice did I have? I was desperate for a good night's sleep, for some semblance of normalcy. I remember walking into his office that first day, the smell of old books and faint cologne. I was skeptical, hesitant, but I sat down, ready to open up about the hallway, and the restless nights, maybe even the shadows. Little did I know, it was only the beginning. Soon, the man would enter my dreams, changing everything. And the first time I saw him in my dream, it caught me off guard. I was walking down the same endless hallway, the one that had become a nightly occurrence. But this time, there was someone else there. A man standing in the middle of the hall, just staring at me. He was so ordinary in appearance, almost forgettable. But there was something about him, a presence, an aura that made him impossible to ignore. I remember waking up that morning with his image seared into my mind, unable to shake the feeling that he was more than just a figment of my dreams. After the first time seeing him, my dreams began to change. They were no longer just me wandering aimlessly. They became about him, the man. Each night he was there, always at a distance, always silent. His presence was unnerving, yet I was drawn to him, desperate to understand why he was there. 
I would walk towards him but never get any closer. I mentioned him to Dr. Simmons in our sessions, trying to describe how real he felt. How he wasn't threatening, but his mere presence was unsettling. Dr. Simmons suggested that he might represent something I was searching for, or trying to understand in my life. But it felt deeper than that, more significant. The more I saw him, the more the line between dreams and reality blurred. I'd catch glimpses of him during the day, in a crowd, or in the reflection of a window. I knew it was impossible, yet there he was, always just out of reach, always focused intensely on me. Then things started to shift. He began to communicate. Not with words, but with actions. Guiding me, influencing my choices. It started small. A suggestion to take a different route home, or to strike up a conversation with a stranger. But soon, it became more significant. He would show me images in my dreams. Images of events that were yet to come. And when those events came to pass... I couldn't help but feel that he had played a part in their unfolding. It was as if he was preparing me for something, leading me down a path that I couldn't yet see. I couldn't help but feel both grateful and terrified at the same time. Grateful for the sense of purpose I was starting to feel, but terrified of what it might mean. Then, one night, something changed. I found myself in the hallway again, but this time he was closer than ever before. I could see the details of his face, the lines around his eyes, the intensity of his gaze. For the first time, he said more than just my name. His voice so plain, I'd forget what he sounded like the second he stopped speaking. I've I've been been waiting waiting for for you, he said. I was frozen, unable to move or speak. He stepped closer, his hand outstretched. Come Come with me. me. And then I woke up, sweat dripping down my face, my heart pounding in my chest. It took me a moment to realize that I was no longer in that hallway. I confessed to Dr. Simmons in our following session how he was commanding me how it felt like I was losing control. The concern in the doctor's eyes was evident, but what could he do? I don't think there's a cure for whatever this is. Each day was a struggle, a battle between my will and his. I could feel that I was losing myself to him, to his influence. But there was an expanding part of me that didn't want to fight, a part that was tired and willing, growing only more tired and more willing. The breaking point wasn't a single moment. It was a gradual erosion, a slow descent into a reality dictated by him, the man in my dreams. His voice in my head became a constant drone, whispering dark thoughts and sinister commands. At first, It was like an intrusive thought, easy to dismiss. But soon, his voice became indistinguishable from my own. One night, he told me to walk, just walk without a destination. His voice was calm, and when I obeyed, the pounding headache subsided. The more I listened, the better I felt. Fatigue washing away, aches and pains melting into non-existence. But soon, his intentions became clear. Stop, he commanded. I found myself in front of an old, decrepit building. An unnatural silence rang through my ears. Enter, he whispered. Every fiber of my being screamed to turn back. But I couldn't. It was like my body was no longer my own. 
The building was seemingly abandoned. The skeletal structure swallowed all the noise as I wandered through the dark, moldy corridors. His whispers guiding me. Downstairs, he demanded. The basement was pitch black, save for a sliver of moonlight creeping through a small, ground-level window. The air was stale, filled with the scent of decay, and then I heard it. A faint whimpering, a sound of pure, absolute fear. My heart was pounding so loud, it was almost drowning out the crying. There. He hissed. In the corner, bound and gagged, was a woman. Her eyes wide with terror, pleading for mercy. Help her, he said. But his tone wasn't compassionate. It was mocking, an intentional twist on what my reality had become. Every step feeling like a mile through wet cement. Her muffled cries pierced my soul. Now hurt her, his voice demanded. Internally, I recoiled in horror, my mind screaming in protest. But my hands, my body, acted on his commands. I could see what I was doing, feel what I was doing, but I couldn't stop myself. He guided me for hours. He knew everything to cut and pull that would prolong life and suffering. I tried to recede into myself, to shut out the images and sensations, but I couldn't even do that. The memory is a stain on my soul, a nightmare that I can never wake up from. The blood and screams. They haunt my every waking thought. When I go to sleep, he makes me do it all again. And through every moment, he is there, in my head, laughing, reveling in the chaos he has created. That night, I lost a part of myself. I became something far less than I ever was. A mere instrument of his twisted desires. He's made me do things. Such terrible things. Each act more horrific than the last. And what's worse, a part of me started to enjoy it. A freedom from moral constraints. I told Dr. Simmons everything, or at least I tried to. But this isn't something he could understand. Not yet. In our final session, I saw the fear in his eyes. The realization that he was dealing with something that had spiraled beyond his control or expertise. I tried to warn him, to tell him that the man would come for him too. But it was too late for warnings, too late for salvation. As I left his office, I knew I was beyond redemption. The man had consumed me. His voice, the only thing I could hear. My thoughts, my actions, they were no longer mine. I am a vessel for his darkness, a shadow of the man I once was. Excerpt from a deleted dream forum, November 5th, 2008, Dreamseeker42. Hey everyone, new here. Started having these weird dreams recently. There's this man. Has anyone experienced anything similar? Lucid Luna. Welcome, Dreamseeker42. Yeah, I think a lot of us here have seen him. Incredibly distinct, yet strangely familiar face. Shadowwalker88. He's a frequent visitor in my dreams, too. Always the same man, but each dream feels different. It's eerie. 
Veiled prophet? The man with no name, yet we all know him. He's like a shadow lingering in our subconscious. Echo of truth. I've had recurring dreams with him. Sometimes he just observes. Other times, he interacts. It's quite baffling. November 6th. Dream Seeker 42. Last night's dream was intense. He was there again, but this time he was guiding me through a maze. Anyone else experience something similar? Shadow Walker 88. In my last dream, he handed me a book filled with indecipherable symbols. Felt like he was entrusting me with a secret. Lucid Luna. My encounters are more passive. He's often in the background watching, but there's always a sense he's about to reveal something important. Veiled Prophet. He's never spoken in my dreams, but his presence is commanding, like he's communicating without words. Does anyone else feel this? Echo of Truth. Absolutely. It's as if his mere presence carries a message, but whatever it is, I can't quite grasp it. November 7th, Dream Seeker 42. There's been this odd feeling lately that I can't shake, even when I'm awake. It's like he's still with me. Does that make sense to anyone? Lucid Luna. Yes, it's not just you. Sometimes I feel an unsettling connection to him, long after the dream ends. It's... I don't know what it is. Shadow Walker 88. I've started to see patterns in my day that remind me of the dreams. It's like the line between sleeping and waking is blurring. Veiled Prophet. This might sound crazy, but I've started seeing glimpses of him in crowds. Just for a second, then he's gone. Am I losing it? Echo of Truth. I don't think you're losing it. We might be tapping into something profound here. Something beyond our normal understanding of dreams. November 8th. Dream Seeker 42. Guys, last night was terrifying. He was more aggressive and demanding. He told me to follow him, and I had no choice. It felt so real. Shadow Walker 88. Something's not right. He showed me visions, horrific scenes I can't even describe. Why is this happening to us? Lucid Luna. I'm scared. He spoke to me too. His words were cryptic, but I felt compelled to listen. It's like I'm losing control of my dreams. Veiled Prophet. This is going beyond just dreaming. He asked me to do something. In real life. I'm frightened to fall asleep tonight. Echo of Truth. I thought I was the only one. He's invading our waking lives too. What if we're not just dreaming? What if he's real? November 9th. Shadow Walker 88. He's controlling us. Last night, he made me watch something unbearable. I woke up screaming. Veiled Prophet. The lines are blurring. He's more than a dream. It's like he's a presence, haunting every moment of my life. Dream Seeker 42. I can't tell what's real anymore. His voice follows me, even when I'm awake. Did anyone else feel forced to act on his words? Lucid Luna. Yes, and it's terrifying. I found myself at a place he described in my dream. I don't even remember deciding to go there. Echo of Truth. We're part of something bigger, something we don't understand. It's consuming me. I'm afraid of what comes next. November 10th, Lucid Luna. I can't escape his gaze. Even in the mirror, I see a flash of him standing behind me. My reflection isn't mine anymore. It's like he's inside me, taking over. Dream Seeker 42. This is a nightmare. He's everywhere. In my home, on the streets. I did something awful after he whispered instructions in my head. Shadow Walker 88. I can't sleep. I can't eat. His demands are getting darker. I'm afraid of what I might do if this doesn't stop. Echo of Truth. He's not just in our dreams. He's a reality, a horrific truth we must face. I can't fight him anymore. 
Veiled prophet. Is there no way out? He's a curse, a malevolent force. We're puppets to his will. November 11th, Dream Seeker, 42. Last night, he urged me to mark the city, carve symbols into park benches, a silent message to those who understand. It felt like a sacred act. Veiled prophet. He showed me a vision of fire. I obliged, setting a small blaze outside a forgotten building. The flames felt like his warm embrace. Echo of truth. I distributed photos of him in mailboxes, spreading his gaze into homes. The thought of their unease excites me. They will soon know his presence. Lucid Luna. He whispered a name, and I found myself outside that person's house, watching, waiting. The fear in their eyes when they saw me was intoxicating. Shadow Walker, 88. I followed his guidance to a crowded place, started screaming his words. The panic and confusion were deliciously palpable. November 12th, Dream Seeker 42. Things escalated tonight. Broke into a house he showed me. Left his symbols in blood on their walls. The thrill was unlike anything else. Lucid Luna. I attacked a stranger in the alley, whispering his words as I did it. They were too shocked to fight back. Shadow Walker 88 caused a scene in a public place, hurt someone bad. His laughter echoed in my mind as I fled. I am his instrument of chaos. Veiled Prophet set a larger fire this time, in a more public place. Watched from afar as chaos unfolded. His will is my command. Echo of Truth I hijacked a local radio station, broadcasted his message mixed with screams. It's out there now, irreversible and haunting. November 13th, Dream Seeker 42. Tonight, I committed an act so vile, so aligned with his desires. The blood on my hands is a testament to my devotion. Lucid Luna. I led a man into a trap. I did as he instructed, taking my time, crafting his will with my own two hands. Echo of Truth. Tonight, I will become his ultimate messenger. The chaos and terror I spread will echo for eternity. Shadow Walker 88 Today, I orchestrated a catastrophic event in a crowded area. His laughter rings in my ears, a symphony of truth. Veiled Prophet I've crossed a line I never thought I would. Took lives in his name. The horror I've unleashed will never be forgotten. As we draw the curtain on the files of Redwood Bureau Phenomenon 0188, we find ourselves standing at the precipice of a profound and unsettling revelation. The case, colloquially known as This Man, is not merely a collection of disparate dream sequences, but a cavernous puzzle that stretches the very fabric of our understanding of consciousness. There is a profound impact from this phenomenon on individuals and communities alike. Reports have surfaced from various corners of the globe, detailing instances where the image of this man has infiltrated the collective psyche, leaving a trail of psychological upheaval in its wake. The reach of this entity, or concept, seems limitless, transcending geographic and cultural barriers with an eerie ease. The Redwood Bureau, in its relentless pursuit of knowledge and control, has grappled with the ramifications of this phenomenon. Their scientists, a mix of the brightest and the most unorthodox minds, have posited a range of theories. The most compelling among these is the notion of a tulpa, a thought form brought into existence through collective belief and psychic energy. This aligns with the Bureau's findings that the phenomenon gains strength through physical and online proliferation, as each post, share, and mention feeds into its existential fabric. However, The Bureau's approach to containing this man is as complex as the phenomenon itself. Their efforts have ranged from the digital, scrubbing online databases, silencing discussion forums, and eradicating images, to the more direct and disturbing, large-scale memory wipes. These drastic measures, though seemingly effective in the short term, have only served to underscore the resilience and the adaptive nature of the phenomenon. 
The eerie persistence of this man, by re-emerging time and again, points toward a form of self-creation, an entity that exists as long as the concept is alive in the collective mind. It's a chilling concept that our own thoughts, our shared consciousness, can give birth to something so tangible and so influential. In their battle against this ever-evolving threat, the Bureau has encountered a paradox. The more they try to suppress it, the more ingrained it becomes in the collective narrative. This battle is not just against a phenomenon, but against the very nature of human thought and belief. As we reflect on the implications of Phenomenon 0188, it becomes clear that this man is more than a figment of the subconscious. He represents the untamed power of the human mind, the ability to create and destroy through sheer will and belief. The Bureau's actions, though drastic, may only be a temporary solution to a problem that is deeply rooted in our psyche. So, as we conclude this chapter, we are left to ponder the questions that this man raises. What are the limits of our collective imagination? And more importantly, what happens when the creations of our mind begin to walk among us, independent and unbound? In the shadowy corridors of the Redwood Bureau, where the line between science and the supernatural blurs, Phenomenon 0188 remains an enigma, a reminder of the power we hold within ourselves and the unforeseen consequences that come with it. And somewhere, in the depths of our shared dreams, this man continues to roam, a creature of our collective consciousness, ever-evolving, ever-present. As we peer into the abyss of the unknown, we must remember, the abyss gazes also into us. And in the case of this man, it may be gazing back with eyes we ourselves, we ourselves have given it. Have given it. personal reference. Last night I had a dream. A man was there, just staring at me. It was uncanny. He looked almost exactly as the patient described. He didn't say anything, just stared with an intensity that felt almost tangible. I've always rationalized my patient's experiences, usually attributing them to stress, trauma, or mental illness, but this... This was different. It felt so real, so vivid. I can still see his face when I close my eyes. I need to consider the implications of this. Is it possible that there's some collective unconscious at play here? Or is it just a coincidence, my mind playing tricks on me after hearing about it so many times? I must be careful not to fall into the same trap as my patient. I'll keep monitoring this situation. For now, I just... I need to make sense of it. End of note.